We begin our inductions with a brief look at how field lacrosse, the sport played by some of this year's inductees, came to be. North American Indians are credited with introducing the game of lacrosse, known as Bagataway. It was actually a form of tribal warfare played by eastern tribes. In 1834, the first recorded game played with some form of rules took place between Iroquois and Algonquin Indians before a crowd of white men in Montreal. Within five years, a white men's team was formed and the Montreal Lacrosse Club were soon able to match the natives in stick handling skills. In 1860, a Montreal dentist, William Beers, drew up a set of rules for the game of field lacrosse. Up until then, the rules for each game were decided just before the game was played. In 1867, with lacrosse growing significantly in popularity, Beers created the Canadian National Lacrosse Foundation. Two years later, he published a book entitled Lacrosse, the National Game of Canada. Rivalry between larger towns in Quebec and Ontario exploded, and several thousand spectators routinely turned out to watch intertown holiday matches. A few years later, someone brought some lacrosse sticks here to Victoria, and by 1883, there were newspaper reports of young men learning the game. Within a year, they had enough sticks and players to have a match at the Beacon Hill Field. In June 1886, a Victoria Lacrosse Club was founded. The first officially recorded match played here in BC took place that August between teams from Victoria and Vancouver. Teams consisted of 12 players plus a field captain who roamed about shouting directions and encouragement. There were also two umpires and two goal judges. With the arrival of the Canadian Pacific Railway, our province began luring pioneers westward. Many were Easterners skilled in lacrosse, and soon New Westminster had a team. Others came to our island, including the Cullen family. Four skilled lacrosse-playing sons, combined with the leadership of Will, the oldest son, led to the formation of the BC Amateur Lacrosse Association in 1890. The following season marked the formation of a three-team, six-game BC Championship Series. In 1891, the series tiebreaker between the mainland teams was played at Victoria's Exhibition Grounds with a pile of betting money riding on the outcome. Vancouver won what a newspaper account called the finest display of lacrosse ever as thousands of fairgoers witnessing a rattling excitement. The blue and white clad locals then secured the enclosed grounds of Caledonia Park for their home games. After Victoria scored with two away wins, they lost their third match after leading three games to none at home. That collapse centered on a defenseman named Doherty, who hastily left town with a bundle of cash after apparently throwing the match. That black mark took its toll on the team, but then Archie McNaughton arrived from Montreal and became their field captain. Victoria turned things around to win their last three matches of that season. The season wrapped up with another disappointment when the long-promised Western tour by the world champion Montreal Shamrocks was called off. That prompted the BC Association to consider sending their champions out east to test teams there. In 1893, the Victoria team beat New West in six straight matches to win the BC title at Caledonia Park and began packing for their train trip east. Ten days later, the Victoria men opened their tour with a 6-0 win over the Montreal Lacrosse Club. They went on to beat the Torontos, tied the defending Eastern champion Montreal Shamrocks, defeated Quebec City, and prepared to end their Eastern tour by playing the league-leading Ottawa Capitals. However, they arrived in our nation's capital to find themselves up against a select team that had been assembled in an effort to ensure the West didn't claim a Canadian championship. Tired and disappointed, our boys dropped that match by a 3-2 count. In 1894, when Victoria and New West finished the season even, a tiebreaker match at Stanley Park drew more than 6,000 fans. Our boys, who had headed over in the morning steamer, were ready and waiting for the late afternoon opening face-off, but the Royal City gang delayed the start by more than an hour, waiting for one of their top players to arrive. With the count at two goals each and darkness setting in, Victoria scored a fifth goal. The ref called the match and declared Victoria the BC champions, but the rules committee ordered a replay because the game had been called 11 minutes short of full time. The Victoria Lacrosse Club refused to play a rematch and threatened with suspension withdrew from the association. The YMCA Triangles picked up the pieces and some of the championship players to finish the next season with three wins and five defeats. During all this, the Victoria Capitals team walked away with the BC Intermediate Crown. The Y men and Capitals joined forces in 1886. In 89, the James Bay Athletic Association became their sponsor and they played their games at the BC Electric Park out in Oak Bay. The Nymo made it a four-team league and netted goals were introduced. The new Westminster team, which picked the name the Salmon Bellies, won the BC title, and in 1900 made a successful Eastern tour, winning six of their seven games. In 1902, the Montreal Shamrocks came west, 
and won the newly created Minto Challenge Cup in New Westminster. Professional lacrosse teams sprang up, and by 1905, a semi-pro international league began operating with Seattle in the mix. A new Royals Athletic Association was formed to promote lacrosse here in Victoria. The club signed a five-year lease on a site for a big new lacrosse field and sold 1,000 $25 shares, each one guaranteeing a grandstand seat for five seasons. They leveled the grounds, fenced it, constructed a thousand bleacher seats and named the new field Royal Athletic Park. Although our seniors couldn't match the level of play of the mainlanders, local lacrosse was solid. As a result, we began running our own show, with the Centrals, the Victoria Wests, and the North Wards carrying the ball. And a district coach was hired to promote the game at the school level. Regularly scheduled games drew a good following, and the 1910 North Ward side wound up the season winning the BC Junior title. At the intermediate level, Oak Bay, North Ward, Cloverdale and Sydney teams were well matched, and a select side representing Victoria won all eight contests to take the Pacific Coast Senior Amateur Lacrosse title. That same season, New Westminster captured its first Minto Cup and held on to it for seven of the following eight years. In 1910, the Man Cup was introduced as a Canadian Challenge Cup to be played for by amateur clubs, with the young Torontos being the first holders. The Vancouver Athletic Club defeated them to win it in 1911 and retained the Golden Award until 1914. In 1911, sport promoter Con Jones stepped into the two-team pro lacrosse show on the mainland and imported Eastern players so his Vancouver club could match the Salmon Bellies. They owned the Minto Cup for a single season. Those matchups drew crowds of 15,000, but when World War I began in 1914, almost all sports either folded or shrank dramatically. There was no Minto Cup play, but the New West Royals remained in existence, winning the Man Cup in 1915 and retaining it for three seasons. Here in Victoria, the Foundation Shipbuilding Company inherited the lease on Royal Athletic Park and continued a sports activity program for their workers, who at the time were building large wooden ships for France. When World War I ended, senior lacrosse rivalry was rekindled, and the Foundation Club won the West Coast battle for the 1919 Man Cup, Victoria's first major championship in 27 seasons. A Canadian Lacrosse Association was also re-established that year and promptly announced an all-Canadian tournament to be played in Winnipeg. The local team had to take its prize trophy to the Prairies, but once there, beat all the other teams to confirm their rightful Man Cup ownership. In 1920, tennis side pro lacrosse was re-established, and with only six returning players, Lester Patrick semi-pro Victoria Capitals were no match for Vancouver, who won their second Minto Cup. The next year, New West reclaimed the title and held it until 1924, when pro lacrosse vanished and the Minto Cup was shelved. Meanwhile, to challenge the Royals for the Man Cup, the senior amateur Victoria Lacrosse Club was formed and played a series against Vancouver. In 1923, Nanaimo and the Squamish First Nation entered the league, but the Man Cup remained in the hands of New Westminster for seven seasons until the switch to the current East versus West format. The city of Victoria purchased Royal Athletic Park property in 1925, tore down the dilapidated bleachers, built a new grandstand, and added a running and cycling track. The golden era of Victoria Field lacrosse was dwindling away, but not without a final hurrah. This Sydney team played a Victoria Sons of Canada squad on July 4th in Tacoma, 46,000 people jammed into Tacoma's new 35,000-seat stadium for the match, the largest crowd to ever watch any Victoria team. By the early 1930s, Victoria Field Lacrosse was largely being played by school teams from Esquimalt, George J., and South Park, and even that ended when box lacrosse made its debut. Some of these Oakland boys, like Lou McCorkle, Buckshot Thomas, and Duff McKehey, were the first to play in a dirt-floored box constructed in Athletic Park and later moved to Stevenson Park. And that sets the scene for our first inductions.